Welcome to the Hudson County Show. Pat O'Melia here, and you're a concerned Hudson County resident. That's why you're watching the show. That's why I do this live. It is live, and we're live on Livestream.com, Yahoo. Uh, not Yahoo. I keep saying Yahoo. It's YouTube. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook, Livestream.com. You should download the app at Livestream.com. You can watch us on your smartphone, your tablet, your web-enabled devices, your smart TV. Uh, of course, Facebook, we're live on your Roku's, your Apple TV's, all those things, and in Jersey City on channel 190 on Comcast. We should be live on Optimum, but the technology is just not there. They are probably one of the worst cable companies. If the people of Hudson County are to get any gift in 2018, it's for uh, Altai's Optimum to be sold. Spectrum is looking at them. We do everybody a lot of good if they would just sell because they're, they're awful. I'm, I'm surprised they don't broadcast in black and white. And they were advertising some Altai box. Don't get it. Don't get it. I would str if you're in Hudson County, I would strongly think of cutting the cord altogether, or possibly go to FiOS, which is it's a tough company too. We are live, as I said. If you need to get in touch with me, you got some show ideas. You need some help. You need some help to help in your county. You need some help in North Bergen, Union City, Weehawkee, West New York. Send me an email. Go to HMG TV shows. If you have an issue with the county of Hudson, send me an email. If you have a consumer issue, send me an email. Send me an email. We're pretty helpful here. That's how we cut our teeth when we started this show. You can tweet me at JC Hudson Media. If you got questions, we can take them during the show. If you got comments, we'll put it up on the screen. This Wednesday, on uh, the upcoming Wednesday, the 7th of February, I will begin awarding our first group of Christmas winners. We did the big Christmas contest. Uh, North Bergen, we're doing the first uh, awarding. Three winners are going to be at Town Hall. They're going to get $1,000 and a nice little plaque. They'd be very happy people. Then uh, we'll do Jersey City last. But I'm waiting on Mayor Stack in Union City to get back to me with a couple of dates so we can award their three winners. And in Bayonne, oddly enough, we're waiting for two of the winners to contact us. One winner has co contacted us. And I told him, as soon as we get the other two winners in here, we'll set up a date, and we'll go, and we'll give these people $1,000. Now, during today's show, I may get a phone call on my phone. My kids bought a house in Seaside Heights, and they're redoing, it wasn't the game plan, but now they're putting in a new shower in the bathroom. While they're at, they figure put a new bowl and sink in there. And it's coming common carrier, LTL, less than truckload. Uh, RL Transportation is delivering it. And they're going to call me because I have the most insignificant job of the entire family, so I can be bothered at any time. Uh, 30 minutes before they make the delivery, and it's about 400 pounds, so you got to have some people ready because they're only going to drop it at the sidewalk. So they're going to call me, and I guarantee you I get this call during the show so we can have people meet the trucker down there and get the uh, shower kit off. It's a, a complete shower, glass shower, you know, all, all the nine yards of a shower. So if I get a phone call, you'll get to watch it. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Hudson County Show. I'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. We're back. You're watching the Hudson County Show, and you're watching it live. Live. It's alive. And we, we, we cover all the Hudson County towns. Um... Like I said, with Altice Optimum, we would like to be live on air network as we are with Comcast, but they are just technically challenged. They're a terrible company. Bob Menendez. Big Bob is a free man. 
the feds have dropped all charges. As you know, there was a declared mistrial. The jury couldn't come to a decision. It was like 11 against, 11 against one there. And Bob is free. Now, if you've watched this show over the years, I had spoke about the uh, trial and the situation Bob was in, allegedly taking bribes uh, from a close friend of his in return for favors. The thing with Bob, first of all, if you get in touch with Bob, he's going to try to help you. Uh, I had a friend of mine uh, from, who used to work for Burns Brothers. Um, he was here. He, he um, uh, moved to uh, the United States. He didn't have the proper documentation. And he eventually got thrown in jail. He was there for like six months. Bob's office was working on trying to get this guy out of there because there was um, some legal issue from 12 years ago. Bob is going to help you if you call, whether his buddy, the ophthalmologist, calls him or you call his office. They are going to get involved. Now, they're talking about gifts and plane rides. This guy has a ton of money. Bob is a public servant. You know, Bob's done all right for himself in life. You know, you got a decent buck being a federal senator. Uh, but he's not to the degree of this ophthalmologist. When I go out with Joe Panapinto or some of the developers or Steve Hyman, these guys that, you know, have done quite well in life, I'm not picking up the bar tab or the dinner tab. Those guys pick that up. You know, they, they know who's – they – kind of know everybody's financial situation. They're not going to stick pat with the dinner bill. And, you know, Bob was friends with this guy for 20, 30 years, and he was hanging out with his buddy. You know, that's really no different uh, than I would with Panapinto or Lola Frax or Steve Hyman. I only got so many rich friends, but, you know, they pick up the tip. So that's what happened with Bob. Now, did Bob, Robert Menendez, forget to list everything? Yeah. <laughs> he might have, but it was just accounting errors. It wasn't criminal. It wasn't bribes. If Bob was guilty of anything, it was bad math. And for whatever reason, you know, they, they went after Bob. Yeah, it might have something to do with the, uh, the Iran deal or uh, Obama and the Cuban, uh, Cuban uh, relaxing of restrictions there. Whatever the case, whatever conspiracy you want to buy into, as I said before in the shows, Previously, in the last year or two, if Bob's guilty of anything, maybe bad math or bad record keeping, but that's not criminal. And obviously, it's not because Mr. Menendez is now a free man. And you, you know Bob in Hudson County. You'll, you'll see Bob around here. Speaking of some politics, I want to get into this a bit. Uh, the State of the Union speech with President Trump, who was his first one, and it went really long, too. You know, I'm trying, I'd like to watch some of my other shows or uh, maybe a movie. You know, Big Bang Theory was on. You know, I wanted to watch Big Bang, uh, but no, I got to watch uh, Donald Trump. And to me, it's hard for me, and it's probably hard for a lot of Democrats, to realize he's the president of the United States. Like I said previously on shows, we kind of grew up with him. He's been in New York for years. He owned the USFL. Uh, he owned the, oh, not the USFL, the New Jersey Generals. He thought he owned the USFL. I was a season ticket holder. He forced me to buy playoff tickets that I knew we couldn't get the home game for. Yeah, uh, Woman Park in New York. He, uh, New York City couldn't get the park going. Donald Trump got the park going, fixed it, the ice skating ring. You know, he, he's done a lot of good things in New York. He, of course, he's a developer of par excellence there. Uh, so it, he doesn't surprise me too often as he does with the rest of this country when he talks off the top of his head or off the cuff. But, you know, it... it it, it's amazing when I look at him. I'm so used to him being Donald Trump. It, you know, it's hard for me to say President Trump. He's doing the State of the, the, state of the uh, Union speech. And I'm watching this. I don't know who wrote this thing. And I'm guaranteeing you he went off script quite a bit because he went dawn on you. Where are those people are beautiful. These are great, beautiful Americans. And I'm thinking, you know, I got a better vocabulary than the President of the United States. And then out of the blue, he says the word reciprocal. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm back to the back of the line now. He used reciprocal. That's probably a word I never said. But if you listen to Donald Trump, he's got one of the most limited vocabularies there are. Everything is beautiful. Everything is great. He is not an orator, that's for sure. Neither am I. You know, people can have drinking games with my vocabulary or vocabulary of mispronunciation of words. But I, I, I think I'm better at public speaking than Donald Trump. Now, for the, the nuts and bolts of the State of the Union speech, that was a pretty good speech. 
until he started you know, get off script a little bit. You know, the DACA, you know, I, I don't know what we should do with immigration. You know, we got laws on the books. I think you need to enforce the laws you have on the books until you change them. We can't arbitrarily pick and choose what laws we want to enforce. You know, it's there, it has to be enforced. It, when you don't enforce one law, then you can't enforce all the laws. Simple as that. You know, you can't, states and cities can't pick and choose what the federal laws are. We have to abide by them. DACA, you know, let's get something going on that. You know, Obama was the president for eight friggin' years. He didn't do anything. At least this guy had the plan. Now, they may not like the plan, but at least he had the plan out there. Transportation, we want to get the tunnel going. We need to get transportation, the subways going in New York. There's a lot to be done. And we only know the Northeast. And if you're going to sit down with Donald Trump, President Trump, and you're going to talk about the Gateway Tunnel, the guy understands the transportation situation in Jersey and New York. It's where he's from. Now, I don't know about the Midwest and California, how up to speed he is on that, but he knows what we need here. So what he was talking about and, you know, bringing jobs back to the United States, yeah, th this is happening. The economy has never been, been better. In this guy's first year, outside of every other week, whatever controversy it is, the nuts and bolts of it, I think he's been doing a pretty good job. And it always amazes me, and this happened when Obama was president too. Yeah, half the room would stand up, half the room wouldn't stand up. We have, as I've said this before, we have to stop the politics. Once the campaigns are over and you've been elected, you got to go to Washington and do the job of the people. You can't draw the line in the sand because you're a Democrat and they're a Republican. Get immigration, if we're not going to enforce the laws we have, then let's get a law we can enforce. You know, the, the DACA, the Dreamers, you know, is there some way we can get them citizenship? Fine, but it got to be respectful for the people who immigrated here and did it legally. Because once you stab them in the back saying, well, you followed everything legally, but we're going to let these other illegals in, then how do you expect anybody to, do, to come here legally? Just wait it out because, you know, we're, we're going to cry alligator tears for these people who are here illegally and we want to send them back. you got to come up with a game plan on how to deal with this. Either come up with another law or you got to enforce the ones we have in the books. We can't pick and choose what laws to do. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Hudson County Show. I'll be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. The Jersey City Medical Center, you know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub, with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center, visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. We're back. You're watching the Hudson County Show. I, I host three shows. I host Jersey City Show, Hudson County Show, and the Tom's River Show. That's why I got to catch myself when I'm saying what show I'm hosting. And then we do this live. Jersey City and Hudson County, we do live. Tom's River is taped. Um, we're going to talk some Steve Fulop, even though he gets his own show with the Jersey City Show. And actually, some people in Tom's River feel I talk too much Fulop down there. But I use Fulop as a guide. See, Tom's River is like a microcosm of Jersey City. What issues they're dealing with, we've been dealing with up here for a while. But Steve Fulop, uh, in my opinion, made the right move. If you've been following the news and the, read the Jersey Journal, and you should read the Jersey Journal, the police unions are sparring with Mayor Fulop. They are very upset with Mayor Fulop. It's been going on for a while. But there was a program, an off-duty police program, that I think became part of the union contracts under Brett Schundler, if I'm not mistaken. In the past year, 10 of our police officers pled guilty to abusing that off-duty uh, job deal. Uh, they weren't showing up for work, but they were collecting money. 10 officers, one of them was our chief of police, Phil Zaki, a Heights guy from the North Precinct. Um, he was getting paid to do security work, 
at the housing authority, which is federal money. So I don't know what situation Zachy's going to be in because those are Fed dollars. The other dollars are, you know, businesses that were paying for security, that sort of thing. Housing authority is federal money there. Uh, you know, why is the chief of police or a police captain doing off-duty work? You're making good bucks there. Uh, whatever. They were stealing the money, bottom line. And, you know, it wasn't a case where they were, like, putting, you know, Zachy's accused of stealing thirty two or 34000 Like, they put a big pile of money in front of them there. Big pile of money. Uh, you may say, well, you know, I'll blow off my $200,000 a year salary. That's not the call, but I'll let this one go. That one is uh, Union City. I will call Erin back from Union City. Um, now you broke my train of thought. You know, if you put a big pile of money, you think somebody, you may get somebody to good people to do bad. But Zachy and these guys were stealing money a couple of $300 at a time. They were getting little part-time paychecks. You throw your freaking career away for this? Now, Mayor Fulop, he doesn't want to hear anything. Yeah, he's cleaning house kind of in Jersey City. You know, the people who, we, who brought him to the dance, you know, the first four years they had positions in the city, a lot of changes are going on in the city. You know, Mayor Fulop, this is what I always believed would have happened if Glenn Cunningham had done a second term. Yeah, you know, basically, I want to thank you for all your help. Here's a parting gift. You're gone. So there's a lot of department heads that are changing. He doesn't want embarrassment. You know, the last two police chiefs were embarrassment. We had a problem with the DPW embarrassment, embar the, the recreation department embarrassment. He's not playing the politics, and he doesn't want to have a situation where the city of Jersey City and he are embarrassed. So he's doing away with the off-duty police program and the unions. And nobody's more pro-Jersey City cop than me. We got a great police force. We got a great success rate on crimes. You commit a crime in Jersey City, we're going to bust you. But I will also say, on the other hand, we don't exactly have the Joker or the Penguin we're dealing with here. These are dumbasses who commit crimes. So we managed to get them. I'm sorry for the interference, but I got to wait for r &L transportation with the, the, the uh, shower delivery. Bullock is going to get rid of the off-duty. Now, the unions are crying, saying, wait a minute, these cops need this off-duty money because they make so little money. I never wanted to hear anybody bitch about what pay they get. When you take a job, it isn't like we're not going to tell you what you're going to get paid until your first paycheck. You know what your pay is. If you don't like the pay when you took the job, don't take the job. Now, somebody's talking about the rookie cops are only making 37000 a year in the beginning. Yeah, everybody starts at the bottom. And I'm going to tell you something. None of the cops that pled guilty were rookies. I don't have any of the rookies. Believe me, the rookies weren't getting any of this gravy. Now, what I suggested to Mayor Fulop a while back, and we talked about it on previous shows, the Jersey City show, is city security. And this is probably a warning for the other municipalities. Now, the money is obviously there for the off-duty. And these off-duty cops are getting like $50, $100 an hour. $50, $100 an hour for those few hours is a day's pay for someone else. City security is something Mayor Fulop should inst institute where we can put people to work in various security positions. You know, Mayor Fulop talked about auxiliary police, uh, not having an actual police force. And we had auxiliary police back in the 70s. These are positions where if people want to get into the security field. We can do this and get it paid for with private funds. Security is an actual field. We, we can do these sort of things. You know, uh, there's stores, there's businesses, there's job sites. I don't need a cop with a gun to watch somebody dig a friggin' hole or to Home Depot deliver sheetrock. I don't need a cop for that. Of, the, of all the off-duty jobs, I understood that 95% didn't require a gun. So, and if we do need an off-duty deal with city security, we can hire a retired cop. But think of what we can do here. We can create another department, maybe an autonomous department, where we can create jobs and put people into positions. We want to get into the security field, which is a real field, law enforcement. This is how you can get into it. Um, you, we can use these kids to back up crossing guards. We can use these kids or young adults, people want to get in this field, maybe as a stepping stone to the Jersey City uh, Parking Enforcement or NIDS. All these buildings in Jersey City, if they have security, we can supply that with city security. And, well, you know, we, we're going to have this money. We can put a lot of people to work with the money that we were paying somebody $50, $100 a 
I don't know what the big for the city got, but the city was getting a cut of that. We can put a, quite a few people to work. And we can not only use them for security, like the high rises, they got security. You realize city agencies, you go to the parking authority, there's an outside security guy or woman sitting in the office there, the front office. I could have city security doing that. People I put to work in Jersey City, from the high rises to the stores, businesses will do business with the city of Jersey City. And we can use the money from that off duty deal. Still, you know, we'll still get the money. We'll deal with the construction sites. We'll deal with the Home Depots. We'll deal with whoever is hiring. And we can put people to work and put people to work with a stepping stone to a career, whether it's in the city or being a police officer or getting in the security field, whatever it is, we can give them the opportunity. We can use this from security to training. There's a lot you can do. Like I said, I don't need a cop with a gun to watch somebody dig a hole. I don't need a police officer in uniform crossing guards because there's a shortage. I can use city security for that. And I understand now Jim Shea, the public safety director, is thinking about a program they had in New York City that happens to employ civilians for a security field. I didn't know they had that. I thought I dreamt this up. But either way, think, smart minds think alike. We can do this kind of thing. And we can put together a nice little job creation department and train people for future employment with the city or stepping stones for a career. And there won't be any corruption involved. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the J Hudson County Show. We'll be right back. Introducing the MyJCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free MyJCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The MyJCMC app, we belong to you. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. I just text Aaron from Union City, who I hope is telling me that Brian Stack has looked at his very, very busy schedule and give me some dates that we can award our Union City winners. I sent her a text. Pretty quick texting, aren't I? Let's go to Bayonne. Go over there. Woo, Bayonne. Bayonne has had a situation with a mosque in what was formerly an industrial building, kind of on the industrial end of Bayonne, kind of residential industrial down there. And the town had some issues with the mosque. Now listen, there is some prejudice. There is some hatred. That's somebody telling me, yes, I got the text. I said I'm doing a live show, but yes, let's make some noise and send them a text. Um, there is some hatred. There is a problem uh, with getting people from the United States and the Muslim community because of 9-11 and Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all that, you know, it, and I understand that. But Bayonne also has laws on the book, zoning on the books, that they have the right to enforce and keep their town as they like. If they don't want someone to buy property and build a high rise that's against the zoning, guess what? That's not going to be built unless you get variances. And without the variances, you can't build that. Now, the people in Bayonne deserved the comfort of their property rights and the zoning. Zoning needs to apply. If the towns have these zoning laws on the books, now if there's spot zoning where we're going to put zoning in because we heard about a house of worship, a mosque, a church, or whatever is coming in, that is illegal. But these zoning laws have been on the books with zoning and parking requirements, that sort of thing. If they've been on the books long before the applicant in this case a mosque, then those zoning laws have to be respected. But in our politically correct world, when it comes to houses of religion, you know, that goes out the window. 
And there is a federal law that, again, supersedes the, um, the local laws. But then again, isn't there federal immigration that the locals are you know, sidestepping or not enforcing or sanctuary city? See, that's where this gets pretty gray. Now, this, the town should have stood and said, listen, this is our requirements. If you can't meet our requirements, you can't have your mosque here. And what is interesting, there was a bunch of closed Catholic churches in Bayonne. It would have been, I think they should have just bought a Catholic church, but they didn't want to do that. You know, in Bayonne, it, apparently, in your zoning, your neighborhood doesn't matter. You know, the parking in your neighborhood, the peace and quiet in your neighborhood, the traffic in your neighborhood, doesn't matter because your zoning doesn't matter when there's a possibility of a house of worship wants to move in there. You know, when do your rights come into play as somebody who lives in that area on that block who owns property there? You know, Bayonne zoning didn't matter. And that's not right to the people of Bayonne, the people who live in that area. They don't want to put up with the parking situation. And one of the hangups on this mosque was the lack of parking. Now there was pieces of land adjacent to the location they could have rented for parking, but they didn't do that. They, they, they played the, the, the racism card. You know, oh, this is because of, you know, Muslim. You know, were there people at the town halls, and they packed the town halls on this, so the, the people spoke. Were there some people who were racist against uh, Muslims because of terrorism? Sure, that was it. But uh, most of those people were there because they wanted their zoning enforced. They want Bayonne to be the town, like I said, if somebody came in and wanted to build a high rise, they're not going to get that built unless they get the variances. But with the house of worship, because of the Fed law supersede local and state, that got through. But then again, I'm saying, you know, well, we're not respecting all the Fed laws now over immigration, so why are we respecting this Fed law? You buy a house on this block where this mosque is going to open, and it doesn't have enough parking. You know, you bought the house last year or the year before, your idea is you saved your money, you know, you're going to raise your family, you wanted a peaceful area, Bayonne as opposed to Jersey City or one of the bigger cities, Newark. You looked at the area, so well, listen, parking here for when people visit, it's a nice area of, you know, two family, one, two family homes, all buy, and you laid out your money, you went into debt, you, you owe hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, you're going to owe it for 30 years, you're hoping you can give this house to your kids at some date, and Boom, uh, a few addresses down where there was a cinder block building, they want to build a mosque. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I don't want to live next to this. I don't want to live next to a mosque or a, or a Catholic church because I know on the nights when the church is open, on the weekends, I can't park during the services. They're going to be cars all over. You know, I, I go to St. Paul of the Cross on uh, Hancock there. And Try to park when the church is open. And, and there aren't a lot of people attending St. Paul at a cross, not like the old days. And that's a problem with the Catholics. They got to go out and do a better job of marketing. You know, you don't see Catholics knocking on your door uh, on the weekends like you see with some of the other religions. But, you know, all the people going to church, they're driving, they park, and then now you live on that block. There's no parking. Fortunately, it's a big school, so on the weekend, there isn't, you know, there's nobody going to the school, so there is some parking as opposed to most of our normal uh, neighborhoods. But you buy that house, you, know, you looked at it, you looked at the neighborhood, you did your due diligence, you did your, you know, your research on the town and the city, and you visited the house numerous times, you went there in the day and the night, you seen the park and you seen your neighbors, and oh yeah, you seem like nice people, well, let's buy the house. You have no rights. Your property rights went out the window in this politically correct world. Now listen, I, I'm not against the mosque. I'm against that they forced the issue in that spot when there were other places Houses of worship that the archdiocese closed, that they could have easily moved in. Uh, the neighborhoods were used to a house of worship there, instead of forcing that. And now I didn't see the whole settlement on this, but somehow Bayonne is now going to pay four hundred thousand dollars because their zoning boards stood and protected their zoning in face of what the federal law is when it comes to a house of uh, worship. Now again, here's something: it's a whole different friggin' world. All laws that we have on the books are the same friggin' laws we had a hundred years ago. They have to be changed now. You know, you've got to turn around and revisit these things. And there's a case where it's on the books for a house of uh, worship. 
Well, you have property rights. You know, what was going on 100 years ago when this law was put into place, it doesn't pertain today. You know, when you look at our world 100 years ago, it's a today, you know, a lot of this stuff doesn't fit anymore. It's a changed world. But one thing that shouldn't change is you have property rights. You have a right to live the way you want on your property in the neighborhood you decided to invest in, in a city you decided to invest in. And that shouldn't be superseded by some federal law that is pushing a house of worship, in this case a mosque, down the throats of this neighborhood in that part of Bayonne, when there were far more viable operations and locations that they could have moved into. Like I said, the archdiocese that closed churches could have moved in there in the neighborhoods that are used to that. But that's not the case, not in this PC world. We're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Hudson County Show. I'll be right back. Meineke Car Care, conveniently located at 700 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City, half a mile north of County Road. Meineke, bumper to bumper car care. Brakes, exhaust, oil change, wheel alignments, batteries, CV joints, and so much more. First rate service at a price you can afford. All major cards accepted. Apply for a Meineke card. Meineke, Jersey City. Stop by and let Sammy check your brakes for free. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. We're back. You're watching the Hudson County Show, and you're watching it live. It is live. It's live in Jersey City on Channel 190 on Comcast and the rest of Hudson County. It's streamed live on uh, Livestream.com, YouTube, Facebook, Apple TV, Roku system. You can pick up Livestream right there, uh, Google Chromecast, your web-enabled device. Got to just download, you get a live stream, you download the app, it is free. All my shows are archived there, and there's a ton of other programming on live stream, so download, free. Uh, Hoboken, uh, DeFrisco, DeFusco, I believe is the proper pronunciation, wants to bring back runoffs in Hoboken. Now, he finished second in the race for mayor, and it was a pretty tight race there. Uh, the... The winner, Robbie, the mayor of Hoboken, doesn't want anything to do with runoffs down there because he didn't want to be in a runoff. But let me tell you what happens in a runoff situation, in an election without runoffs. Um, most of the time, the individual who won the general election will win the runoff, but there are those upsets. Jersey City had James Solomon. Uh, he was an upset winner in the runoff. But when you have five of the six candidates in a race, you're not sure you're going to get the, the real leader of the pack there because you're really dwindling the, the votes between so many candidates. You know, I've seen elections in Jersey City where we had like 10 candidates for mayor without a runoff. And there's talk of Mayor Fulop wanting to eliminate runoffs in Jersey City. You can actually rig your general election. How would you do that, Pat? Because this is Hudson County. Things like that wouldn't happen. Well, pretty easy. You get a lot of candidates. Now, there's always talk in Hoboken in particular that there were people who were asked to run to siphon off votes from old Hoboken versus new Hoboken, high-tech Hoboken against low-tech Hoboken, young versus old, uh, uptown, north town, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but, yeah, that could work because you could start putting candidates in and say, well, why don't we run uh, candidate B 
so he can siphon some of the black vote, or we should run this candidate because he can or she can um, absorb some of the uh, reformer vote and so on and so on. And you sit there saying, is that true? Well, that's exactly how campaigns are figured out, how they do this polling, where the votes are coming from, and some of these guys who run these campaigns, they know where that vote and who's going to come out and who they're going to vote for before that person does. And they know exactly how they can figure this out and how they can rig it. And if you just have a winner-take-all, you just overload the ballot with 10, 8, 10 candidates. And these, some of these candidates have no chance in hell of winning. You know it, we know it, everybody knows that. But they will get some votes. They'll get votes from mom and dad and people in their neighborhood, people from a community, you know, uh, you're the reformer person, you know, the reformer people will drift over there. And you start siphoning votes away from what would possibly be the challenger. Now, the incumbent, there's a lot of power with the Office of Incumbency, especially with the run for mayor. Um, it's usually a lot of money. They can fundraise real easy. You know, mayor Fulop can run, fundraise faster than he can actually print money on a computer printer. He can raise it. Same thing's going to be the situation in um, Bayonne, I mean, uh, Hoboken. Bayonne right now, there's only two candidates. They may pull a third one in there, but there is runoffs involved in Bayonne. They still have an election in May which was one of the biggest mistakes Hoboken made, and you see the, the price now. Dawn Zimmer, she never won with more than 50% of the vote. Robbie, same thing. Remember um, Camerano? Defeated Zimmer in the runoffs. Runoffs changed the game. Now it's a focus. You weeded out everybody, and you weeded through the issues. And when you get to that runoff, and it's an isolated runoff in that community, away now from the national stuff, because that's what they throw this in in November, it's like, well, more people will come out if they're going to vote for the governor and the president and the state senators. I, I really question that. Um, but in the runoff, now it's focused. There's no governor, there's no state senator, there's no president. It's the runoff. And it's a local now. All the people in the community are now focused on is that one campaign. And that game changes. And that's what happened in downtown Jersey City. You know, there was um, some people came out for the vote because we were, you know, the governor. But after that, and there were like five or six, there were five candidates. I said, no, there were six candidates in Ward E in uh, Jersey City. When it came down to two, now it became a real uh, race. And in this case, James Solomon came victorious. He finished two, but he eventually defeated Candace Osborne, who had the wink, wink, nod, nod from Fulop. You know, she was at Fulop's vic uh, victorious uh, uh, post-election celebration. And everybody assumed Candace, I assumed Candace was going to win. But that's the beauty of a runoff. A runoff focuses all the attention on the candidates. There's nothing else. There's no governor. There's no state senator. There's no assembly people. There's no council. There's no council at large. And going forward, as we go into November now, I know here at the studio I hosted all the debates for the council and the mayor. I'm not going to do that anymore. And we're, we've, we're going to host a mayoral debate for Bayonne. There's talk about me doing some of the council. Uh, i got to look into that a little bit more. But I'm definitely going to host one of the Bayonne mayorials debate. And we just got to lock that date down. I know the Davis camp hasn't been getting back to me about when to lock down that day because they don't want to do this live, and we will broadcast it live. When I do the next group in Jersey City, if I'm alive, I'm not going to take everybody from Ward A or Ward B because I know some of these people don't stand a prayer in hell of winning. I'll have council people. I'll have council at large in that debate. I'll have an assembly guy. If there's a state senator, I'll have a state senator candidate in there. I will bring a group of people who are involved in Ward A or Ward B or whatever ward it is. But I'm not going to bring that, that fifth candidate in because I know that fifth candidate doesn't have a prayer in hell. I know a little bit about politics. I've been covering it a long time here. I know that fifth doesn't, so I'm not going to waste any time, live television time, for a candidate that doesn't have a prayer. In Jersey City, we didn't do any council runoff, council at large. We didn't do any assembly debates. We didn't do any state senator because we're all focused on a, a general election, television-wise, but the, the area was focused on the governor's election. 
next time around, I'm going to bring a council at large, an assembly candidate, maybe one or two of the wards, and that's it. So without the runoff, that little guy doesn't have a prayer because I'm not going to give him any airtime. And I'm going to tell you, everybody else who does debates are going to think the same thing. So wait a minute, I want the assembly people here too, and I, I want the state senators. But I can't keep having debate after debate, and that's how you're going to do it. You're going to pick and choose your candidates. And that's what happens when you move the elections to November. Bring back the runoffs in Hoboken and leave them here in Jersey City. We're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Hudson County Show. We'll be right back. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue in Jersey City. Your local collision specialist. Body and fender repair. On-site oven-baked paintwork. Fiberglass repair experts. Custom and classic car restoration. All insurance is welcome. 24-hour towing available. Licensed by the state of New Jersey. Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue, 201-222-3050. Plaza Auto Body, your bumper to bumper buddy. We're back. You're watching the Hudson County Show. Pat O'Melia here. You are concerned Hudson County resident. I like you Hudson County residents. Remember, we're doing this live on Livestream.com. Download the app. Should be liking us on Facebook. Is that what I should be doing? Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. I should be doing that. Subscribe. Like me. Uh, follow me on Twitter. All that good stuff. I should probably should be doing a lot of that. Greg's over here saying, yeah, yeah, you should be doing that. I'll stay in Hoboken a little bit. The dry dock property on the waterfront of Hoboken is, uh, is a hot topic up there right now in Hoboken. New York Waterways wants to use the property through New Jersey Transit to repair and maintain the ferries. Now, that's a very important piece of transportation for Hoboken and this whole corridor up here from Jersey City, Hoboken, Weehawken. Right now, the dry dock, and I want to keep the word dry dock in. And by the way, if I forget to mention this, Hoboken, the dry dock property has been owned as dry dock for 130 years. You know, there was a history of Hoboken on the waterfront. Hoboken doesn't seem to want to embrace their history anymore. But it's there, the dry dock property is there, and it's ideal for ocean going, river going maintenance of ships, in this case, New York waterways, ferries. Now, right now, they're in Weehawken, and they're in rental space uh, owned by Imperator, Arthur Imperator, who I knew from my trucking days at APA. And you know, he's out of the trucking business, he did pretty well in the uh, real estate business. They are going to develop the site right now where the dry dock is in Weehawken for repair and maintenance on the New York Waterway Ferry. So they got to find another place. Now, Hoboken Dry Dock has been in that business for 130 years. Now, they're making a deal to sell it to New Jersey Transit for $11.5 million. I want to say it like that lottery guy. $11.5 million for this company, Dry Dock. The mayor of Hoboken, oh, he doesn't want that. They want a park. But you see, the park, you lose rateables again. And you know what Hoboken is really getting hit over the head with? Taxes. Property taxes from the city and the county. And you keep building these parks. You know what? The parks don't have rateables attached. So little by little, you're forcing people out of Hoboken who can't friggin' afford to live there because your rateable base keeps shrinking and shrinking. Here's an opportunity where you can continue to have that rateable base and jobs. Now, how ugly is the repair and maintenance on these ferries? No, they're not doing, you know, sandblasting and the bulkheads and, you know, doing massive repairs, as was its history. This is a lot of light maintenance being done here. 
and it is ideally located. Now, New Jersey Transit is going to have a meeting, I believe, this upcoming Monday concerning buying the land. Now, Governor Murphy is probably getting phone calls from Robbie saying, don't let him do it, don't let him do it, don't let him do it. But from a business standpoint, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But Robbie's problem is if New Jersey Transit buys it, he can't use them in a domain. And that's what he wants to do. Now, listen, if Hoboken walked up to the dry dock people and said, listen, we're going to match the $11.5 million, $11 million for the property, I'm sure dry dock would sell it to him. But guess what? And that's not the case. They want to get it at a far reduced rate. And they, so they don't want to respect the property rights of the people who own dry dock. So they want to build a park where you'll lose rateables, and then they got to pay to convert it into a park space, and then they got to pay to maintain it. Now, who does all that? Who's paying for all that? Let me think. Let me think. Hmm. That would be you, the property owners in Hoboken, where your property taxes keep going up and up and up. You can't afford to lose any more rateables. And the funny thing is when you buy park space, you take it away from parking lots. Another foolish thing. You know what Hoboken has precious little of? Parking. Actually, they have screwed up parking in Hoboken to a degree that has not been seen in the United States anywhere else. Parking is atrocious in Hoboken, and they bring it on themselves from mismanagement. I'm part of the uh, parking committee in Jersey City. Whenever anybody in a parking committee, so much as chirps, well, Hoboken does. What are you, freaking nuts? Hoboken is awful. I was part of the, the, the media that was attacking Hoboken for just indiscriminately booting people. They looked at parking as a way to you know, rebalance their budget because it's so expensive in Hoboken. And it keeps getting more expensive and more expensive because you keep losing rateables. Now, do you need any more open space on a waterfront, on the very small waterfront of Hoboken? Of course not. Do you like the ferry service? Do you like the ferry service being reasonably priced? Now, Robbie is saying, well, you know, he did some survey online where 91% of the respondents said, oh, yeah, we'd like a park instead of this industrial dirty dry dock. The freaking dry dock's been there for 130 years. Nobody has a problem with that dry dock. So I don't believe Robbie's statistics. You need jobs, you need the ferry service, you want the ferry service to be reasonably priced because Robbie's talking about subsidizing it. Now, Robbie's not taking that money out of his pocket, mind you. He's got to take it out of the city's revenues. And then he can't pay his bills. So what does he have to do? He has to raise your property taxes. New Jersey is ridiculous with that now. One of the main items, from what I, when I put together a list for Governor Murphy, from the Asbury Park Press put together their list for the main concerns Governor Mur Murphy has to address, number one everywhere is property taxes. New Jersey is ridiculous with it. And it's the state, and it's the county, and it's the municipalities that keep pounding away. And they keep using this, oh, we need park space, we need open space. You need a balance. And Hoboken's a whopping mile square. You know what you need in Hoboken? Parking but you just completely keep inconveniencing your people. Yeah, and you, you, you're trying to say, well, they don't need the cars. Yes, they do. Because, you know, transportation in Hoboken blows too. It's not as bad as Jersey City because our bus service is horrible, and at least Hoboken's small enough that if you want to go to New York or Newark, you can get on the path. Outside of that, yeah, yeah, you got a problem. You know, you're, you're not taking a bus anywhere out of uh, Hoboken. And they have the loop to get you around in Hoboken. But Hoboken is getting incredibly expensive. And the last thing Hoboken needs is to lose any more rateables. Now, that's a lot of rateables coming out of that $11.5 million drive dock property. But in all, let the New York waterways have the dry dock. Let them maintain and stage their ferries there. It's not like we have some, you know, uh, ugly ships here. These are pretty good-looking boats. I think Robbie should back down continue to get the rateables, continue to have New York water, uh, waterways have a reasonably placed ferry service, and I think everybody's happy. You have enough open space on the waterfront between the county. The county owns a ton of it there, too. All right, we're going to break for commercial. Go dry dock. We'll be right back. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, 
or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. We're back. You're watching the Hudson County Show. Pat O'Neill, you here. You there. We're doing it live. Live, 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 live. All right, since I was just beating up property taxes and open space, let me go to another one. In Jersey City, the home of Liberty State Park, state-owned park, uh, there are concerns that would like to expand through the park. Now, Liberty State Park, outside of commercial expansion, uh, there's a new restaurant, uh, Martrack, or more pack. I never went in there. Every event I go down to is at the Liberty, uh, Liberty State uh, Steakhouse, right? Liberty, what is it? Liberty House. I always go there. I'd like to go into that more pack or more track because I have yet to be in that building. Took them forever to build it, but now it is open. It's a restaurant, you know, catering hall sort of deal. And you got the marina, and that's pretty much much for commercial. Then the rest of the park is basically open space. You got the old train station that's it's going to fall over any any day now. It has not changed one iota since I've been. I was there for Glen Cunningham's inauguration back in 2001. This park is in serious need of maintenance and upgrades, and but there's no money. It costs about three and a half to four million dollars a year to maintain Liberty State Park. Now the state, the state with the highest property taxes in the United States, New Jersey is trying to figure out how we can cut expenses. How can we cut property taxes? That's Governor Murphy's number one job. And the state that operates this park, the DEP, is figuring, trying to figure in ways to bring in revenue. Now, three and a, allegedly three and a half million to four million dollars a year to maintain the park. There is a bulkhead that was damaged through time and Sandy that needs to be repaired for the tune of 40 to 50 million dollars. Um, if the state does it, you're paying for it. Now, the marina that's interested in coming in is willing to pay for the bulkhead. They'll pay the $40, 50000000 million, and they'll pay a lease rate of, I don't know, how many thousands of dollars a year. Now, there's another concern now that wants to expand into Liberty State Park, Liberty National Golf. They would like to move three or four of their holes further in to uh, Liberty State Park. Of course, they'll pay a, a lease fee for that. Between the marina and Liberty National and that bulkhead repair, you're probably now making three and a half million a year in new revenue. So now you got some found money that you can actually do some upgrades in Liberty State Park. Maybe you can, you know, uh, clean up the rail station and, you know, historically uh, renovate it so it, you know, you want to walk through there and look at things. Uh, again, it's just platforms, you know, but I like the old names that are on the, uh, the platforms. Uh, if you can get three and a half million dollars in new revenue, that bulkhead repaired. Now, I know there was an op-ed that was done that, you know, oh, listen, we got to keep the park free for the people and free for the wildlife. We're not talking a lot here. The marina, and they'll have the marina, and I've never seen an ugly marina. And they'll have some restaurants and some retail. None of it will block the views. That's a big concern. You can't block the views. We won't see the Trade Center or the Empire State. You'll see it. You know, you, nothing's going to be so high. I remember when they were building the empty sky, 9-11 Memorial. You'll block the views. Well, guess what? You can still see the views. You can see New York. You can enjoy the sun. We're not blocking the sun with any of this. The marina should go forward. Now, listen, I know Sam Pesson, great guy. You're going to have to, you know, back down, Sam. If the state can get money to renovate that park and operate the park and handle the maintenance on that park, that's 3 and a half to $4 million less a year than the residents of 
uh, the property owners of New Jersey have to pay. If they can get, or is it Suntech, Suntan uh, Marinas to pay 40 to $50 million to repair that bulkhead and maintain it, that's 40 or $50 million the property owners in New Jersey don't have to pay. Well, let me throw residents in there because like every fee is attached to this state that the residents don't have to pay. It is a nice park. It's a great piece of land. The Peasant family founded this park back in the 70s. But nobody, you know, very few people come up from South Jersey to go to Liberty State Park. Yeah, it's probably more people that visit Seaside and uh, Seaside Resorts than visit Liberty State Park. Yeah, you're not coming from LBI to go to Liberty State Park. People aren't coming from uh, the Midwest just to re hit Liberty State Park. Yeah, they're going over to New York. And between the expansion of the golf course and the marina, there's a lot of properties still for the wildlife, still for the park goers. But now we covered the cost of the park and its maintenance. And that's a stroke of genius with the state. The DEP, I don't care what anybody says, if you can cut. And listen, everybody, anybody who says, well, no, we, 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 we want it free and uh, we don't care whether the money comes to maintain it and we don't care how we fix that bulkhead, they're friggin' idiots. But there isn't a person in New Jersey that doesn't complain about the price of living in New Jersey. And here's a case where we can reduce the burden on the people of New Jersey. Now, they, the bulk had 40, 50 million right off the bat. The park's three and a half million. And between these two entities, they can cover that nut, then we have to do that. We have to do a lot of that. A lot of that has to be done. That phone call can wait also. I don't know, somehow, sometimes I tap it and they stop. It doesn't stop. Uh, I just hung up on her. That's my, but I didn't hang up on Michelle Sabina. I had to hold it. If we can cover that nut, then we're going to cover that nut, and that's the thing we should do. Now, what also should be done is shared services with the county, the state, and the city to maintain Liberty State Park. So anywhere else, it's saving money for the people of the state of New Jersey. You get the lease rates from the golf course and the marina. You get a shared service agreement between the state, the county, and the city of Jersey City. And the residents of Jersey City, or the residents of New Jersey, aren't paying that bill. So now you really do have the park scot-free. And it's not a burden on the entire state. So I think that's the way to go. And like I said, there's no ugly golf course. And two, the marina, people say, oh, it's a millionaire marina. No, there's a lot of people who are in the boating business that aren't millionaires. Now, Liberty National, that's a whole nother deal. I think you got to give them like $500,000 to be a member. That's a whole nother deal. You could say that's for millionaires. But the marina is not a millionaire marina. You know, the average Joe is into the boating thing. You know, that's kind of handed down. And there is a lack of slips in the Northeast. But, you know, there aren't just millionaires boating. I, I go down to the shore. There's people down there without millions of dollars enjoying the boats. They're out there fishing, clamming, whatever they're doing. So if we can cover the expense, we should do it. Now, I'm sorry for the phone interference. As I said early in the show, I'm waiting for a call on a delivery of a shower kit for my kid's house. So I had to have the phones here. But now we're out of time. I'm out of show. You be good. You be safe. Don't forget, we're going to load this on uh, YouTube and live stream. I'll talk to you this Tuesday on the Jersey City Show. Good night.